Yeah, welcome back to the show. Delighted to say, taking time out from Ballygunner's preparations for this weekend's uh, Munster Hurling Club Championship quarter final uh, with Cool Ram McDonald's is Ballygunner's own Desi Hutchins. And Desi, welcome back to the show. Thanks a million. Thanks uh, for having me. Well, uh, thank you for taking time out. I'm just wondering, like, what's the preparation like for for a big game like this? Because, uh, like, I'm, I'm kind of thinking since ever since you came back from Brighton, there probably hasn't been a quiet game or a kind of a routine game it's pretty much been go 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 pandemic go 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 again for you yeah it has to be fair it's been a fairly hectic couple of years I suppose but preparation for this game is just the same as any other really just taking a hand you know this week a little bit of training done not much more to do and I suppose just relaxing a bit of college work to do and things like that so keeping the, the mind occupied what's the college work? Uh, I'm up in Mary Eye in Turles so plenty of assignments and at you around this time so just keep busy with them Jeez, there is a certain thing about taking a handy you know what I mean like you could at some stage decide to give yourself a rest like when you when you decided to quit professional football and come back and play Ireland I would have thought that this is an opportunity to kind of let things breathe a little bit but no you're throwing yourself in there full whack aren't you yeah uh, there's definitely no time to breathe anyway I'm probably busier <laughs> now than I ever was but uh, look it's all for it's all for good reasons you know it's, it's nice to keep busy too um, obviously you could do it the break now and again but look we get that at times too yeah I was just going to ask you about the break as well like it's something that has, has popped up a lot I guess in conversation about uh, particularly about inter-county players because uh, when this notion of the split season came about there was thought that you know it's going to give club players a chance to concentrate on club and it'll have uh, inter-county players not being pulled away from club duty uh, during the course of the inter-county season uh, but for players like yourself it seems to be a never-ending year uh, is that how you feel with this or has there been kind of enough breathing room for you or is there still some tinkering that needs to be done with this season uh, I think there's definitely still a bit of tinkering to do with it because as you said for some players they're they're going nearly full year round like if you're going into the business end of Munster Club Championships and all learning series it's, it's a very long year I suppose for myself we haven't had too much of a break. We got a couple of weeks after the inter-county season finished. And then I suppose we played our county final, uh, I suppose, nine weeks ago nearly now. Um, but a few of us went playing football then for six weeks. So there's been no real break in between. So I think the structure needs to be maybe looked at a little bit to guarantee players a couple of months, a couple of months off at some stage during the year, whether it's speeding up the both seasons or whether it's slowing down a little bit to give the breaks in between. But uh, I think there is a little bit to do, but look, I suppose when you're preparing for Munster Club or things like that, it's um, you're not too worried about taking a break around because it's all exciting. But look, eventually you will have to take a break. Yeah, burnout's got to be a, a massive consideration considering the fact that you do have lives and you're trying to study and there's other lads trying to work and there's other lads with families and whatever else. Like, uh, superfluous to the to the hurling or indeed the football. Like, people need to actually have times to to be human outside of the game as well. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Look, and that's that's important too for the mind like you know you can't be you can't be going 90 all year round because eventually it will take its toll so it's a, look it's about finding a balance for yourself and as you say about burnout and that you just have to really top up on the way you recover and that after trains to avoid I suppose long term injuries or anything like that thankfully I've been lucky enough so far that I haven't received any but um, I suppose for some players they might they might be getting injuries a lot quicker than other people and it's very hard to keep going throughout the year. Is there ongoing consultation like with the GPA? Uh, like Because we do hear from time to time like they've put out surveys and, and that led, I think, in parts to the split season, etc. But is there constant kind of discussion back and forth? Is it a two-way kind of dialogue about how you guys are feeling in terms of the season, in terms of what tweaks could be made, in terms of what changes could be made? Yeah, there is, to be fair. Look, the GPA have been great, especially this year. Look, they, they're the ones that introduced the split season, really, and called for it. And there's no doubt about it that the split season was always going to take a couple of years to, I suppose, fully get it right. And that's probably still in the process of doing that. So, But in terms of the GPA, they've been, they've been great. And I suppose they ask us for a lot of feedback throughout the year, and we give it to them. And I suppose that's what they're going to try and work on now for the year coming forward, too. Yeah. Uh, things around Ballygunner, though, I'd imagine, have, have, have probably only calmed down by the time you were cracking back into to, to Waterford Championship again, weren't they? Yeah, it was, to be fair. Look, it was a great few months, I suppose, after winning the All-Ireland. But I suppose... It, the new championship comes around quick, quick, and I suppose we've not a lot of new players after coming into our group too that haven't experienced any of our, our I suppose our county championship wins, let alone Munster and all our clubs. So 
I suppose to to get them right, we need to fully focus back on on the Waterford Championship, and thankfully we done that this year too. Was was it almost a case of the the sudden nature and the last gasp nature of that win uh, back in the, the previous final was almost the best way to do it in a way because it didn't feel like there was going to be a massive lead in a massive expectation. It was sudden. It was a sudden burst, and from that you kind of just have to almost instantly recover from that. Yeah, exactly. Look, it was look as you said, it was an incredible way to to win it, but I suppose. After a few weeks, look, for some of us, we were back into the intercounty after eight or nine days. Like, you know, so we, we kind of brought it back down to her fairly quickly. But for some of the lads, they, 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 they enjoyed themselves for a couple of months. And rightly so, you know, like, you're well entitled to do that. But as soon as the management decided we we're going to get back on the horse, nobody had any issues with that. And everyone was raring to go for the year ahead. Uh, what was the assessment on, on the Waterford year um, I know there was an, an element of disappointment around the camp that didn't necessarily go to, to plan and obviously Liam has departed since um, what was your kind of take on things throughout the year? Sure look it was a huge disappointment, a disappointment to be honest with you I, you're still trying to put your finger on it a small bit lucky for us in Ballygunner we were able to get back on the horse and get back into the group environment there and and I suppose focus on that but in terms of what happened we don't know it was just a really disappointing year after starting so well in the league and we put a lot of work into the league and look there's no doubt about it I'm glad we won the league because it's, it's a medal you have in your back pocket at the end of the day and also in Waterford I suppose we don't get it um, that often so it's important to, to I suppose cherish them moments too but um, look the championship is so it's so hard, I suppose, in Munster that if you slip up in one game, you're on the back foot straight away. And, and that's what happened to us. We went down to Limerick, we were beat and we were on the back foot. And then we, it was a, a must-do game against Cork and it was for them as well. So, look, they came out on the right side of it. We didn't perform in the day and that's the reality of Munster Championship. Um, Liam, as I mentioned, has, has obviously departed. Um, he performed brilliantly, I, I think, when, when there. And obviously, giving yourselves the opportunity to go to Crow Park and win a medal, like that... It's not as if that you can't keep using that, um, I guess, experience to draw upon in in further years down the line with Waterford. No, absolutely. Look, and there's no doubt about it. Liam done a great job with us. The way it ended is a disappointment, I suppose. It might overshadow all his good work and the way it ended, but like we're definitely in a better place as a team because of Liam's work. And um, no doubt about it, Davey's going to drive that on even more and get still some belief in us that we can go all the way because I think maybe we lacked that a small bit in, in the last couple of years of actually getting finals and maybe not believing 100% that we were going to win them and look, when you're at that kind of level and you're playing against top teams you need to have all the belief in the world and maybe we lacked that a small bit but as you said, it's going to be experience for us all knowing that if we come across them situations again we're going to have to do a little better with them What you put that lack of belief down to? I suppose it's just it's probably just because it's such a young group and it hasn't been successful at senior senior level. I suppose a lot of the lads would have had um success at minor and under twenty one level, but I suppose senior hurling's a completely different ball game and then there's a lot of new players there and I suppose there was a lot of experienced guys that weren't still in the panel. So we were all probably gelling together at the same at the same time. So maybe that that has something to do with it too. But I think we're definitely going to be in a better place for it. Uh, have you had, because I think when Davey was on with the AM lads a couple of weeks ago, he was mentioning that he was obviously going to be in contact with the with the panel. Like, what was your instant reaction when you saw uh, Davey was coming back to the county? Yeah, it was, it was pure excitement, I suppose, because luckily enough, my own brother was involved when, when they were, when Davey was there before and I kind of knew about a bit about him since then. But I suppose for a player and a supporter of Waterford, you're going to be looking forward to it because he's, Everybody knows Davy wears his heart in his sleeve, and he, he'll put everything into into Waterford hurling over the next couple of years. And that's all you want as a player is for a manager to come in and give it everything to give, I suppose, us the best platform to go and play off. Have you spoken to him yet? Yeah, well, we met him once or twice. Is all. Um, in fairness, he's leaving us. He's leaving us to the club at the moment, and he's wished us the best luck there. But I suppose everything he's put in place so far seems seems brilliant. And it, I suppose for a player going back into training now over the next few weeks, it's it's going to be exciting. Yeah, it's unusual that, like, obviously you've got your brother's experience to draw upon. There's others that might have been around your club as well that have probably dealt with him before. So you can kind of almost get the skinny on him before you go back into the panel and see what he's going to be like. But, like, he seems to be one of these managers that, that that's ever-evolving, that there doesn't you don't seem to get the same David Fitzgerald twice. Uh, seems to be yeah, more exactly. from the outside. Like, yeah, definitely. Like, there's not, it's not going to be the same David Fitzgerald that was in Waterford, what, 
12 years ago, I think it is now. So it's it's going to be different. And I, I suppose he he's after learning a lot through his manager the career that hopefully he's going to bring to us now again. Like, you know, so I'm sure he's always trying to, to learn thing, new things and, and so are we as players. So to have him coming in with all his experience is only a good thing for us. Yeah, a massive, like a, a huge motivator. I think he's just one of these people who seems to be a natural motivator. And when you talk about perhaps a, a confidence uh, dip in the squad, he's somebody who can certainly work towards bringing that back up. Yeah, definitely. Look, you, no matter whenever you hear Davy speak, you're you're going to listen to him, whether it's on the telly or it's in person. You're you're, you're just, I suppose, brought to him and, and you're listening to him, no matter what he has to say. So I think that's good, and I think he's going to be excellent for us, especially for a, a young group like ourselves. Um, it, it's going to be important. And then we have we have really top hurlers in our in our team too. So it's all going to please God gel well together. Yeah, it's it's a squad kind of uh, like you know I think it's it's shot through with talent. It's not as if you've got guys who are struggling to to find form around like that. Like you've got a string of club champions within the uh, the core of the team. Uh, you've got players who've been there for a while, and you've got really young performers coming through as well. You've got a nice mix. You've got a nice blend. You've got a team that people would be pretty envious of, I guess. Yeah, there is, and look, this squad of players, I suppose. Please God, we don't lose anybody or anything like that. But this squad of players now is going to be with each other three, four years. So, like that, that's massive. I suppose going into a new year, that y- you know what each other are like. Maybe a couple of years ago, we we didn't really know what each other were like. Like I might have not known lads too well because I was only back a short time. Whereas now I know all the lads very well. So, look, just not long ago, people were talking about us being being the best team in the country. So that doesn't change overnight. We believe we are we can get back to that top table and, and compete again um, and there's no reason why we can't go and do that. Yeah, and our club championship coverage on Off The Ball is brought to you with the IAB proud sponsors of the Football Hurling and Camogie All-Ireland Championships. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. Desi, before you go, I want to ask you about uh, about soccer and about football, about, about Brighton in particular. Do you still keep an eye on things? Do you still have contacts over at the club? I know a lot of your kind of teammates from when you were there, the likes of Jason Malumby and, and Aaron Connolly have, have moved on uh, to a degree. Is there still a fondness there for Brighton? Or are you very much? I've I've seen Manchester United, Terrell Malassia kind of pictures on your timeline. Uh, so that uh, suggests yeah. that might your 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 allegiances might lie elsewhere. And we're probably after distracting you from the last uh, ten minutes of United Sociedad tonight. Yeah, no, I'm probably better off sporting Brighton at the minute <laughs> than United. But um, no, look, you you keep an eye out for him. I wouldn't pay a, a huge amount of attention to it because, as you said, there's not many lads. I suppose that I would have played with over there that are still there. Maybe one or two. Um, but that's about it. So, but look, you'd still keep in contact with a lot of the lads you would have played with, especially the Irish lads. There's a lot of them doing well now, as you said, Jason Lumphy, I suppose Aaron Connolly, um, Danny Mandrew has gone back over, which is great to see. Um, Warren O'Hara doing really well at MK Don. So there's a lot of lads still doing very well. And then you'd have a couple of the English lads that are still over doing really well as well. So look, you keep in contact with them a small bit. I wouldn't say I'll be on the phone from every day or anything like that, but you definitely keep an eye out for them. You were like you weren't far away from, you know, seeing first team action and stuff like that and in certain cup games too. Like is there any kind of tinge of regret in terms of your time there and, and how it turned out? Or are you pretty much happy with, with your lot? Uh no, there's not. I suppose there's there's no regret really, I suppose. Maybe if you, you got a bit of exposure to first team football a bit sooner, things might have been different. But in terms of regret, I don't have any. I suppose I've been really lucky that when I came home, I've been really successful within the GA so so far in, in the four years I've been back. So I suppose there's no regret. Maybe if things weren't going so well with uh, hurling and Gaelic football back home, at home, it might be a, I might have a different answer for you. But at the moment, you don't really get too much time to reflect on it either. So oh look I'm, I'm happy with the choice I've made and thankfully it's all going well so far Absolutely you've got this quarter final as I mentioned uh, coming up on Sunday at Welsh Park um, and then like it's like you look through that Munster Championship and it like, you, the, the talent that's uh, uh, you know basically on show the other half of the draw you got Ballier and Finbars and then uh, Yee will be playing the Pearshik if you get through like that's it's an incredibly stacked championship really isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's it's really, really competitive. And that's, I suppose, it shows the importance of focusing on game by game. You can't get ahead of yourself and start thinking about Munster semi-finals or Munster finals or anything like that. We we know we have a huge challenge ahead of us on, on Sunday in Welsh Park against Kilaron. And look, they, they're coming off the back of a, a really good uh, county final win. I think it's the first time in uh, 37 years or something like that. So they'll, they'll be on such a high and it's going to be a massive challenge for us. And but look, it's one we're really looking forward to. This is why you play the game. You want to be involved in these big games. And 
look, we've probably have a target on our back as well after after last year, and people are going to want to beat us. So we know we're going to have to stand up even more. Yeah, absolutely. Desi, uh, do you want me to spoiler the United result for you tonight? Or are you okay? Uh, go on, you can give it to me there. Uh, they won one nil, but it's not enough to top the group. So you still got an All extra right. round in the Europa League. Uh, but uh, yeah, a victory is a victory, I guess, at the end of the day, isn't it? Uh, Desi, thanks so much for taking time out to speak to us. I know, obviously, you're preparing for that game on Sunday. We wish you the very best in it.